Hello everyone. Today we are talking about Rapport, Google's implementation of local differential privacy. Rapport stands for Randomized Aggregatable Privacy Preserving Ordinal Response and is basically a way to make randomized response suitable for non-binary data. I will cover only the client side of Rapport. I will cover the server side if you like in a future video. Tell me in the comments. I strongly encourage you to watch my video on randomized response first. If you don't know what it is, I will link it in the description of the video. Furthermore, Rapport uses Bloom filters, which I won't explain in detail in this video. You'll find the video on Bloom filters also in the description. Also, I assume you know what differential privacy is. If not, you'll find the link to my videos on differential privacy in the description as well. I explain local differential privacy in the differential privacy video as well. In short, local differential privacy perturbs data on a user's device before sending it to a data curator. This way, the curator doesn't need to be trusted as it never receives any raw data. It is more privacy preserving than central DP, which is also called global DP. Randomized response is a way to achieve local differential privacy, but only works for binary variables usually yes or no questions. Rapport is a way to generalize this idea to non-binary var variables, for example, continuous numbers. I would explain the algorithm and at the same time provide an example to illustrate. A client has a certain value, for example a number v, let's say the number of steps or average heart rate, which has to be perturbed. Rapport sends a bit array of size k, which is the perturbed representation of the value v. Let's say this value is 68 and the size of the Bloom filter is 256 bits. We need five parameters for the algorithm, k and h, which I've already covered, f, p and q, which are just parameters for probabilities. Let's start with the algorithm. First, the client's true value gets hashed on a Bloom filter of size k, in our case 256 bits, using h hash functions. In our example we use four hash functions and the red lines represent the ones and the green short lines the zeros of the Bloom filter. Now the first thing in the algorithm is called permanent randomized response. This is calculated once for each value. So for each bit in the Bloom filter a binary reporting value is created. This is stored in the fake Bloom filter B prime. The value is one with probability half times f and zero with the same probability half f. A third option is to keep the value uh, the same as it is in the original Bloom filter with probability 1 minus f. f can be changed according to the privacy guarantee needed. So if you imagine an f of for example 1, the probability to get 1 and 0 are exactly equal. High f values yield stronger privacy protections. In our example we use an f of 0.5. Let's assume our fake Bloom filter p' prime looks like this. Next, uh, the, the next part of the algorithm is called instantaneous randomized response. This is generated so that if you send the same value twice, it's, it is actually not encoded in the same way, which would um, give an advantage to the attacker. Instantaneous randomized response means that now a second bit array of the same size is allocated and all bits are set to zero, of course, and this is the final report which is sent to the server and this report is called S. Again we change the bits according to some probabilities. The probability that they are set to 1 is Q if the corresponding bit in the Bloom filter is 1 and P if the corresponding, corresponding bit is 0. Remember Q and P are two variables, two parameters of rapport which we can set according to our privacy needs. So P and Q are two tunable parameters to control the probability of the bits in S. If both are 1, then S equals P. In our example, P equals 0.5 and Q equals 0.75. And the result might look something like that, and this S array is now sent to the server or to the trusted curator. We send S instead of P prime, as I've said, to further complicate tracking. If you would use the permanent randomized response every time the value gets queried by the server, the attacker can infer some information uh, out of this fact that it is always the same array. Using a secondary array to further randomize the response increases privacy. I will not cover the proof on why this is differentially private, but I can cover it in a future video. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in a video like that. 
To summarize this video, rapport is a way to implement randomized response for non-binary data. We have seen how an arbitrary number like 68 has been mapped to a randomized array, first B, then B prime, and finally S, which is then sent to the data curator. The mapping happens via Bloom filters, which are then randomly changed. The original Bloom filter is being randomized twice in order to preserve privacy. This video only covers the client side of rapport. The next step is to decode all the data on the server, which is needed to make sense of all the randomized mess. This is much more complicated than the client side, which is why I will only cover it if it is requested in the comments. Until then, see you in the next video.